Read the directions for Section 1 in your test book. Section 1, Listening Comprehension. In this section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers in this test. Do not take notes or write in your test book at any time. Do not turn the pages until you are told to do so. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording you hear... I don't like this painting very much. Neither do I. What does the man mean? In your test book you read... A. He doesn't like the painting either. B. He doesn't know how to paint. C. He doesn't have any paintings. D. He doesn't know what to do. You learn from the conversation that neither the man nor the woman likes the painting. The best answer to the question, what does the man mean, is A. He doesn't like the painting either. Therefore, the correct choice is A. Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number 1. Did you buy your ticket from a travel agent or from the airline? Does it matter? They're all the same price. What does the woman mean? Number 2. When do you think your apples will be ready to pick? You can always tell whether an apple's ripe by its color. What does the woman imply about the apples? Number 3. My lease is about to expire, and I've decided to get a larger place. Do you know of any two-bedroom apartments for rent? Have you checked the off-campus listings at the housing office? What does the man imply? Number 4. Judy looks terrific these days. Better than I've ever seen. I think it's her new haircut. Short hair really flatters her. What does the woman mean? Number 5. How about if I come over to pick you up at 6.45 for the movie? Make it 7. I won't have finished with dinner until then. What will the woman probably be doing at 6.45? Number 6. I'm moving next week, and I have so much to do. I'll never get it all done. Don't forget to tell the post office to forward your mail. You don't want to miss any important letters. What does the woman suggest the man do? Number 7. Is that a new pair of glasses? I'm making do with this old pair until my good ones are fixed. What does the man imply?
Number 8. I've spent the whole morning at the library looking for the information we need, you know, for the assignment that's due Friday. I'm stuck too. Maybe Dr. Boyd will have some suggestions. What will the speakers probably do? Number 9. I thought you wanted orange juice. The machine only had milk. What does the man imply? Number 10. Not many people know that I'm going to get this promotion. Your secret is safe with me. What does the woman mean? Number 11. The weather's so nice. I think I'm going to eat my lunch outside. Care to join me? I'm meeting Bill in the cafeteria at noon. How about tomorrow? What does the man mean? Number 12. Listen, Eleanor, I shouldn't have said what I said yesterday. It just didn't come out right. Well, I shouldn't have let it get to me. What is the woman doing? Number 13. Are you just about finished? I need to get a hold of George before we leave. Just one more quick call, then it's all yours. What does the woman mean? Number 14. I can't decide whether to take Professor Brown's class or Professor Thompson's. I can tell you this about Thompson. She knows how to get your attention and hold it. What does the man imply about Professor Thompson? Number 15. I heard you were worried about your history final. How did it go? Well, the essay part was about what I expected, but the multiple choice section wasn't bad. I was really surprised. What does the woman mean? Number 16. You've been sitting at that desk for three hours. In half an hour, I'm going to take a break for lunch. What does the man mean? Number 17. I thought you didn't have time to go to the bank. It was close, but I made it. What does the woman mean? Number 18. Could you please check the list again? I sent in my registration application and fees for the conference last month. Let me. Oh, you did. Yes, here's your name. Okay, you can go ahead to the next table for your information kit. What can be inferred from the conversation? Number 19. How do I get to the museum cafe? I left my map at the information desk. What does the woman mean? Number 20. I'd be glad to drop you off downtown on my way home. Well, if you're sure it's not out of your way. 
What does the man mean? Number 21. I've got to go to the dentist tomorrow at 3. Do you think I could make up the hours I'll miss another day? I'll see what I can do. What does the man mean? Number 22. I can't seem to shake this cold. Sometimes the only thing that helps is taking it easy. What does the man mean? Number 23. I forgot to get a new pen for tomorrow's calligraphy class. Do you know when the campus store opens in the morning? I'd try the mall tonight. Your class starts early. What does the woman imply? Number 24. I just tried Richard's house and nobody answered. That's odd. He left here at noon, so he should have arrived at least 30 minutes ago. What can be inferred from the conversation? Number 25. That little grocery store on the corner looks as though it's seen better days. I'm afraid it's only a matter of time before it closes down. What does the woman mean? Number 26. I can't seem to get the TV to come on. It must be broken. Have you checked to see if it's plugged in? What does the woman imply? Number 27. I'd like to get a chair with wheels because I need to be able to get from the computer to the phone more easily. I'll take it up with Gary in office furnishings, but I can't make any promises. What will the man do? Number 28. So you think your supervisor approves of your work? She didn't come right out and pat me on the back, but I did get that impression. What does the man imply? Number 29. Are we all set for the meeting downstairs? I told them we need a slide projector. I took care of it on my way back from lunch. What does the man imply? Number 30. Do you think the blue jacket would look better with these pants? In this heat, I don't think you'll be comfortable in anything but the cotton one. What does the woman suggest the man do? This is the end of Part A. Go on to the next page. Now read along as the directions for Part B are being read. Part B, Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. 
Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation between a college student and his counselor. Good morning, Steve. What can I do for you? Well, I've decided I want to transfer to a smaller college. I know you've had a rough time adjusting, Steve, but I'm sorry to hear you want to leave. What I need to do now is find a new college, and I was hoping you might have some ideas. I might, but first I think I ought to warn you about some of the potential problems with transferring. The main one is how many of your credits will be accepted by your new college. You mean they won't all be transferable? Not necessarily. It'll depend on what courses you've taken here and how they fit in with the requirements at the other school. So whatever college you choose, be sure to find out about transferring your credits. Who would I talk to about something like that? First check with the admissions officer, then follow up with the registrar's office. Now, the other thing I wanted to caution you about is thinking that a transfer will solve all your problems. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Well, I know you haven't been happy this semester, but are you sure changing colleges is going to be the answer? Uh, I like my classes, except for composition. The math department is everything I expected it to be, but maybe if my roommate and I had hit it off better, that's really bothering me more than anything else. Really? Did you talk to someone at the residence office? It might be that changing roommates would make all the difference. I might just do that. Number 31. Why does Steve visit the counselor? Number 32. What is one possible problem the counselor points out to Steve? Number 33. What is Steve's main problem in adjusting to his college? Number 34. Where will Steve probably go to get his problem solved? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a radio interview with an author. Diane, first let me congratulate you on your latest thriller's success. Tales of Deception has topped the bestseller list for the past 27 weeks straight. How do you do it? In my novels, plot is everything. I'm fascinated by suspense, and I try to weave as chilling a tale as possible. I seek to give my readers an extremely intricate mystery that keeps them guessing until the last minute. For your latest novel, I understand you worked undercover with the Los Angeles police for several months. What did you get out of that? Well, since my main character is a police detective, I needed to immerse myself in that role to find out how an officer thinks and how a crime is investigated. In addition to telling a powerful story, you are quite deft with the language. You seem to place quite an emphasis on precise descriptions, and of course you really know how to set the scene. Thank you. Actually, I began my writing career as a poet. It's no coincidence that I've strived for a, a certain style. It seems to me it would take years to produce something so well-written and researched, not to mention the time it takes to work out the plot. And yet, you write so fast that sometimes you've got two new books out at the same time. Tell me about your work habits. I keep at it all the time. I get up at 6 every morning, review the outline for the chapter I'll write that day, and don't stop till I'm finished, sometimes four or five in the afternoon. Even when I'm not at my desk, I'm working. Ideas flash through my mind all day long. That's why I carry a little notebook around with me. 
I guess that's about all the time we have today. Thanks very much for being with us. You're quite welcome. Number 35. Why does the man congratulate the woman? Number 36. Who was the main character in Tales of Deception? Number 37. Why does the man ask the woman about her work habits? Number 38. Why does the woman carry a notebook? This is the end of Part B. Go on to the next page. Now read along as the directions for Part C are being read. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several short talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and the questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you hear, Listen to an instructor talk to his class about a television program. I'd like to tell you about an interesting TV program that will be shown this coming Thursday. It will be on from 9 to 10 p.m. on Channel 4. It's part of a series called Mysteries of Human Biology. The subject of the program is the human brain, how it functions, and how it can malfunction. Topics that will be covered are dreams, memory, and depression. These topics are illustrated with outstanding computer animation that makes the explanations easy to follow. Make an effort to see this show. Since we've been studying the nervous system in class, I know you'll find it very helpful. Now listen to a sample question. What is the main purpose of the program? In your test book you read, A. To demonstrate the latest use of computer graphics. B. To discuss the possibility of an economic depression. C. To explain the workings of the brain. D. To dramatize a famous mystery story. The best answer to the question, what is the main purpose of the program, is C to explain the workings of the brain. Therefore, the correct choice is C. Now listen to another sample question. Why does the speaker recommend watching the program? In your test book, you read A. It is required of all science majors. B. It will never be shown again. C. It can help viewers improve their memory skills. D. It will help with coursework. The best answer to the question, why does the speaker recommend watching the program, is D. It will help with coursework. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to an announcement on the radio. As we head into hurricane season, we'd like to take this opportunity to go over some precautionary measures you can take in this dangerous season. This is especially important for those of you living in coastal areas where hurricanes can be destructive because of their heavy winds. The following guidelines have been established by the National Weather Service. 
Before hurricane season even begins, stock up on batteries, candles, bottled water, non-perishable foods such as canned goods, and other emergency equipment. In case of a hurricane warning, following these safety guidelines may help save your life and property. First of all, protect windows with boards or tape, since they're not strong enough to withstand hurricane force winds. These winds can reach up to 200 miles per hour. Also, the National Weather Service recommends that you fill up your car with fuel in case you need to evacuate. Gas stations may be closed by the time you need to leave your home. Remember also, it is suggested that you stay indoors if your home is sturdy and on high ground. However, homes in low-lying areas will likely be evacuated since flooding is a possibility. Listen to the radio for emergency weather reports and evacuation information. If called to evacuate, leave the area immediately. You will be advised of the locations of local shelters. Number 39. What is the talk mainly about? Number 40. What organization provided the information for the announcement? Number 41. What should people do before hurricane season begins? Number 42. According to the announcement, why should people fill their cars with fuel before a hurricane? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to part of a lecture in a United States history class. In the days before telephones, radio, and television, the only network of public communication that could reach farmers was the mail. But this wasn't the mail as we know it today. At that time, in the early 19th century, mail delivery was uneven and widely scattered. In fact, many people living in rural areas got no mail at all. In the early decades of the century, mail carriers were privately employed. They did not work for the government. Many years later, when the government finally took charge of delivering mail, it was mostly in cities that mail got delivered to people's homes. So farmers still had a problem. They had to go to a post office to collect their mail, which, by the way, wasn't always nearby. Farmers' requests to have mail brought to their homes were at first met with outrage. What could be more ridiculous, many urban residents asked, than paying government employees to travel miles across the countryside with an occasional letter? Nevertheless, farmers' organizations succeeded in convincing the United States Congress that farmers needed mail delivery. Finally, in 1891, Rural Free Delivery, known as RFD, came into being. In a sense, Rural Free Delivery was the most important communications revolution in United States history. Rural Americans were now lifted out of the relatively isolated communities they lived in. Because of Rural Free Delivery, there now ran a highway to the world from every farmer's doorstep. Number 43. What does the speaker mainly discuss? Number 44. What is true of mail delivery in the early 19th century? Number 45. According to the speaker, what problem did farmers face with early mail service? Number 46. 
How did many city residents react when farmers first requested mail delivery? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a lecture in an Earth Science class. Today I'd like to explain the Mohs scale, used in what is called the scratch test. This scale is based on the simple fact that harder minerals scratch softer ones. For example, a diamond scratches glass, but glass doesn't scratch a diamond. A quartz crystal can scratch a feldspar crystal, but not the other way around. The scale is named for Friedrich Mohs, the mineralogist who devised it in 1812. His scale spans the range of minerals known at that time, from the softest to the hardest. By performing a scratch test using known minerals and a few common tools, an unidentified mineral sample can be placed between two points on the scale. By referring to the scale, the mineral can then be identified. I have here a collection of the minerals included on the Mohs scale, as well as the tools necessary to complete this exercise. I'd like you each to take a mineral sample from the basket at the front of the room and classify it according to its place on the Mohs scale. First, however, I should give you a little warning. The hardness of any mineral depends on the strength of the bonds between ions or between atoms. The stronger the bond, the harder the mineral. Because bond strength may differ in various angles of a crystal, the hardness may vary slightly depending on the direction in which the mineral sample is scratched. So be sure to scratch each sample in several different directions. Number 47. What is the lecture mainly about? Number 48. What aspect of a mineral is the Mohs scale used to identify? Number 49. What does the teacher ask the class to do? Number 50. According to the teacher, when might the hardness of the same mineral seem to vary? This is the end of Section 1, Listening Comprehension. Stop work on Section 1.